All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is Bob Beal, ASMFC Executive Director, and I've been asked to kind of facilitate this session this afternoon. Um, so welcome, commissioners, proxies, uh, federal partners, members of the public. It looks like we've got a, a pretty good turnout uh, this afternoon. Um, for the next hour or so, we'll be going through a discussion session on the president's executive order, uh, specifically section 216C of 14008 uh, executive order entitled Executive Order on Tackling Climate Crisis at Home and Abroad. So um, I think the, the format for this session will be very similar to what uh, the councils have done earlier if you've sat through any of those. Um, the uh, Sam Rauch, uh, Deputy Assistant Administrator for Regulatory Programs is with us. Uh, Sam will give some introductory comments on the executive order and the, and the process that, uh, of soliciting comment. And, um, and then we'll go into any questions specifically for Sam. And then the bulk of this session really is for um, the commissioners and proxies and members of the public, if there's time, to give feedback to NOAA Fisheries on the executive order and um, provide your perspectives on um, tackling the climate crisis. So um, I think with that, if there's no questions on process, I think we'll go ahead and um, Sam, uh, we're glad you're here. Thank you for making some, some time to meet with the commission and provide background on the executive order. And uh, it's all yours whenever you are ready to go. Thank you, Director Beal. And I did have, I did send over, I think three slides or two slides. Thank you very much. And if you guys could advance them when I, I do that because I don't know how to do that. Um, and that's fine. We can just stop on this one. Uh, thank you very much. I am Sam Rauch. I am the Deputy Assistant Administrator for Regulatory Programs. That means I'm the Deputy Director of the National Marine Fisheries Service. I oversee the work of our various regional offices and some of our headquarters regulatory offices. And I'm here today to talk about the Executive Order 14008, Tackling the Climate Crisis at Home and Abroad, and specifically 216. C. I will talk a little bit about the broader uh, executive order, but the focus specifically is on 216C. I have the text up here on this slide, and for those of you who might not be able to see the slide, it directs Commerce and NOAA to initiate efforts in the first 60 days from the date of this order, which was basically right around Inauguration Day, uh, January 20th, uh, to collect input from the fishermen, regional ocean councils, fishery management councils, scientists, and other stakeholders on how to make fisheries and protected resources more resilient to climate change, including changes in management and conservation measures and improvements in science monitoring and cooperative research. And so we did, we did initiate those efforts. It does not discuss when those efforts should end, but we have been initiating these efforts for some time. And this, this discussion point today is part of those efforts to collect input from the commission, which we consider very much on par with the Fishery Management Councils in, in terms of the, uh, their interactions, their, their unique regulatory role that it has regarding uh, fisheries and, and their broader mandate regarding protected resources and other things. And we, I know that the commission has been dealing with climate change and the implications of climate change for quite some time. To, so to some extent, this is not new. We're not asking the commission to do anything um, that is foreign to them. Uh, we know that the fish stocks in general uh, are impacted by various environmental parameters and that, that those environmental parameters have been changing, resulting in warming oceans in places at different degrees, um, increasing acidification and rising seas. And we know that that can, um, it can have distributional effects as stocks move in response to those changing parameters. It could have uh, population effects as some stocks just may not uh, fare well in the new regime. There are other stocks that may fare better, that this may be a more uh, appealing regime for them. And so we may see some stocks grow and other stocks decline. Uh, we at uh, NOAA Fisheries have put out uh, a number of climate vulnerability analyses where we've tried to look at uh, some of the important stocks for fisheries and other things around the country and predict which ones of them are more dependent on climate parameters or not, which ones may have more difficulty in changing climate regimes than others. But all this works out uh, in impact, not just on the ecosystem, but on our fishing communities up and down the coast as they struggle with, um, with the, the changing uh, ocean environment and how to deal with that, how to predict that. 
So we work with a lot of partners, including the commission uh, and the states in how to understand and respond to these various parameters. Um, and I think we all have the joint goal of ensuring uh, sustainable uh, economic development, sustainable ecosystems, sustainable communities uh, from this ocean enterprise that we are all involved in. Uh, but specifically today, we are asking for your input with that background and recognizing that, that you have been working on these issues for quite some time um, on how you, what ideas you may have to make fisheries and protected resources more resilient to climate change. We've been specifically asked by the president to do that. We are collecting that information. As I indicated at the outset, the, the process was to start within 60 days, and I think we met that target. Um, but there's no specific endpoint. We do intend to collect any uh, opinions, views from the commission as, as we are with the councils. We recognize that uh, the commission doesn't sit in constant session. And so uh, we are very pleased with anything you get with us today. But if you give us uh, input in the future, we will also take that into account not only in our positions that we take with the commission, and we do have a seat on this commission, um, but also the way that we deal with other fisheries that are important to the states that make up this commission. Um, at a minimum, one of the things that we that we do is we do put out periodically regional action plans under what we have. A, we have a NOAA fisheries climate science strategy, which has regional action plans. And we do intend to take the input that we get and update those regional action plans in the near future. And we're not just looking at this in terms of the Atlantic Coastal Act, which is, of course, the uh, the act um, that undergirds the commission's uh, regulatory authority here, but also in terms of the Magnuson-Stevens Act, which is, deals with the council aspect, the federal fisheries, the Endangered Species Act, the MMPA, the Sanctuaries Act, the Coastal Zone Management Act, and others. And so we're looking at all of those things and trying to take input uh, from you and from the stakeholders that, that uh, interact with the commission on a regular basis. Um, you may be aware that uh, on April 2nd, we opened a 30-day comment period to take comment from the public at large. Uh, we did get quite a number of comments that closed uh, earlier. I'm uh, sorry, we opened that on March 2nd, that closed on April 2nd. And so we did have a number of comments submitted from the public in general through that forum. We also continue to, to look for ways to collect information from the public in, in any other forums that are out there. Before I uh, close uh, and turn it back over to you, Mr. Director, on uh, this, I do want to take an opportunity, because this always does arise, to talk about the rest of this executive order. The executive order is quite long. It has a number of sections, not just 216C. Um, there are There's discussions in the executive order about wind production, about oil and gas development, about a number of other factors. The one issue that comes up very frequently in these discussions, though, is the provision in 216A. Uh, 216A is directed at the Department of the Interior, so not directly at Commerce, and asks the Department of Interior to prepare a report on how to advance the president's goal of conserving 30% of U.S. land and water by 2030. And this is of some interest to the various forums that we've discussed this. And I, so a couple of things I would like to raise with that. Um, it is an interior uh, led effort at this point in terms of preparing the initial report. Um, any comments that we get though, we are submitting, you know, it's, you can submit them directly to interior, although they've not yet opened a comment period on that. Um, but anything that we get through this process, we have been sharing with interior and we would keep doing so. The report is, if you calculate out the, the timing of the report, it is due around now. I do not know exactly when uh, Interior might issue the report, nor what exactly will be in the final report. But I do envision that the report is likely to set some broad parameters. I do not know that it will define what conservation means. Conservation, we've heard from many stakeholders, it could be a great many things, from protection against all potential uses to a more managed for sustainable use sort of approach and various things in between. So the definition of conservation will be important to, to assess where the United States is currently in the president's goal of 30% of the land and water um, and how far we would have to go by 2030. 
I also think that the report may lay out a process for ga gathering the public participation, which is actually talked about in 216A, the importance of a stakeholder engagement process. And I think the report may set the groundwork for that. Uh, so um, we're happy to take any questions or comments you have on 216A, recognizing that at the moment that is an interior-led effort, and so I don't have a lot of answers about that. Um, it does not define conservation at the moment, so we do not yet know exactly where on that scale of 30% of the land and water we are. Um, it also does, I do not anticipate that when um, Interior issues the report, they're going to identify particular parcels of land and say these should or should not be protected. I envision more that Interior will lay out a process by which to get to those kinds of questions and that there will be further discussions with the public uh, about that process. Those discussions are envisioned in the rest of 216A. So I'm happy to take comments on that and forward them over to Interior, uh, but to be clear, that is an Interior-led effort at this point. So with that, uh, Mr. Executive Director, I'm happy to turn it back over to the Commission to answer any questions or uh, be available for any discussion on this topic. Great. Thank you, Sam. Really appreciate your comments. and. and you know, appreciate you recognizing the role of ASMFC and, and, you know, we find ourselves in a, given the range of ASMFC from Maine through Florida, we've got a kind of a unique perspective on the entire East Coast and a unique ability to react to the impacts of climate change. And we're, we're, we're trying to keep up. There's a, there's a whole lot of, uh, within our jurisdictions changing very quickly with climate change. And, and I think this effort by the, by the president is, is, is great and uh, getting feedback from you know, all of our commissioners into the process is, is definitely appreciated. So with that, um, are there any questions specifically uh, to Mr. Rauch on the on Section 216C or, or the process uh, that will follow the, the input from ASMFC and, and the process from all this input from all the stakeholders moving forward? If I don't see any questions, we'll go straight into to, uh, specific comments if folks are ready. All right, I see no hand, so I guess you get off easy, Sam, with no questions, and we'll, we'll move right into um, comments. And Sam, you know, if you, after there's a comment, if you would like to respond, just, um, you know, feel free to jump right in and respond. If you if you don't have a response other than thank you, and we, you know, appreciate the time, and we'll, we'll forward your comments along, uh, that's fair too. So a couple of hands are up, and I'll start um, working my way through the list. So uh, let's start with, um, Chairman Kelleher, Pat, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Bob, and Sam, thanks for this presentation. Um, I, I, I guess it really is more of a question, though. Um, the, the document itself, do you envision this to be kind of a living document as we continue to learn over time, or do you believe that the administration is going to take this to finalize a document to then just start initiating changes with it? Are you referring to the interior report under 216A or? No, the, broad, the, broad, the broader broader climate, the broader climate conference. Uh, well, I don't, uh, yeah, thank you. I do not envision that the president is going to alter the executive order. Uh, he may issue fur further executive orders in the future, but I think this executive order uh, is all he's gonna say on this topic. For fisheries though, I do envision we are gonna keep um, refining our approaches on the time. And we have a, a NOAA climate science strategy, and that will be a somewhat living document as periodically we uh, uh, adopt and amend that strategy, as we already indicated. We're going to take this input and use that for an amendment in that. So I believe that we will do various um, within fisheries um, changes. I, I mean, I, I do think we will issue documents. And they will be done, but we will look at them in the, the future. I don't think that we, you know, what I think of a living document is sort of a document you put on the website and periodically, you know, things will change on that document. I, I think we'll put them out in pulses, uh, but we will amend our approaches constantly as we get new information, new uh, approaches to uh, climate science or climate management. Great, thanks, Bob. And I think uh, I think Sam, Bob. I think from a commission standpoint too. After today, um, I, I would request that the states kind of talk between the administrative commissioners uh, and the governor and the legislative appointees, and maybe we can bring some thoughts back together at a future executive committee meeting 
between meetings to finalize any additional comments that the, the commission might have. All right, great. Thanks, Pat. We can we can definitely do that. And you know, given that this is kind of a living, evolving conversation, we can we can provide feedback later on. That's great. Um, the next hand that I have up is Jim Gilmore from New York. Thanks, Bob. And <clears throat> hi, Sam. I hope you're doing well. Um, just a uh, sort of a, a question that raised before, uh, has come up before, and um, it's really is this either been raised now or is it something that's in, in play? Was that if we remember, if you remember, we a few years ago we had that meeting in DC, um, several years back, and about climate change. And the one thing I, I think that was uh, one of the items that came out during that meeting was that. The commission was set up a little bit better to deal with climate change because particularly you know on the east coast there were all 15 states represented but the council structure was a little um or maybe not um as well set up because it was divided into three three parts um and again when magnuson was first um passed and now 40 years ago or plus it was looking at i don't think anybody envisioned uh, things moving around so much. So uh, first off, ha has that uh, can, are we going to be able to uh, look at the council structure? And if the structure is OK, maybe the procedures under that. Is that something that's been raised? And is that a fair question under this process? Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, bearing in mind that we're not currently uh, seeking legislative changes now some of the so to some extent the council structure that you're referring to involves the membership of the various councils which is set by statute i you know it is it is perfectly fine if the commission or individuals want to give us those recommendations but i at the moment um we are not looking for a legislative uh fix or not i mean we, the president will consider that as they do all as President's consider all requests for legislation and may or may not support something like that. I certainly think that to the extent that um, you are discussing things you can do that are less than a legislative change, um, we would be interested in that. We would we would want to discuss with the councils and the states sit on those councils and the states are important players in that councils and so the states often have various views that we want to take into account. But we we. I do want to make clear that when we when the executive board talks about how to make fisheries more resilient, when we think about fisheries, we're not just thinking about fish in the ocean. We think about the fishermen and the communities that they come from. That's what makes up the fisheries. It's not just the the fish in the sea. Um, and so when the fish in the sea move, it does have effects up and down the coast as they become available or not available to various communities. And so you know, we're looking at to make that entire enterprise, not just the fish, but the communities and the fishermen that they that they rely on more resilient. And to the extent that we need to look at governance structures, uh, hopefully with less than legislative changes to those governance structures, I think we are very willing to look at that question. Thanks, Sam. Great, thanks, Sam and Jim. Um, any other comments? I don't see any other hands raised um, right now. Maybe I'm missing them, but I don't. I don't see any other comments from commissioners. Tom Fody, you got your hand up. Go ahead, please. Yes, Sam. It's Tom Fody. Um, I see that a lot of times when we look at the migrating of fish or the expansion of ranges of the fish, we kind of confuse the two. I mean, perfect example in New Jersey, we have surf clams that have moves north and offshore. So we actually change their location. When we look at black sea bass, we now see black sea bass in other areas that we didn't see them before, but that's an expansion of the range, not of the um, of the fish migrating, because they're still available in, in Virginia. They're still available further south because they're more acclimated to warmer climates and they seem to survive in the south. So we have to make the difference on fish that do migrate or fish that are just expanding their range. And the tendency has been just to look at them as migrating from one area to another. You know, it's also some of the historical data, if you look by, as fish get older, they move further north. And I don't know the reason why, but that seems to always be the habit, whether it was summer flounder and other species. So we need to take that into consideration when we start 
juggling and saying, well, the fish are not low over here, they're not, because they are sometimes here. And I think it gets confusing to us as managers, how do we handle that? Or we confuse the two scenarios. So we need to straighten that thing out, I think. Yeah, thank you, Tom. I appreciate th those distinctions. And it is really hard to talk about generalities because the various stocks, many of them respond very differently. Uh, if you look at our climate vulnerability analysis, we do look at uh, some some species that are winners, for lack of a better term, and others that are losers because they are more or less affected. And it is hard to pick out um, what is causing the trend. You know, fishery managers like to look at long time series. Um, the fish stocks go up and down frequently on an annual basis, and and maybe there's nothing wrong with that. That is just the way the fish the fish behave. But over time, you can start discerning trends, but you may not discern trends until well into something. If, if there is a regime shift occurring, you may not pick it up until you're halfway through the shift. And it is sometimes hard to tell whether the fish stocks are just moving normally, uh, whether their range expanding or contracting. Um, what is, you know, is it responding to environmental change or human induced pressures? Um, you know, much more direct, like fishing pressures. These are really difficult issues to pick out. And figuring that out is often critical to, to responding appropriately with a management response. And it is not easy to do those kinds of things. Uh, so I appreciate your uh, recommendation that we be precise when we can. I would also caution, though, that many times we just don't know. We, we know that the stocks are in a different place at a different level. We may not know why, and we may not know for how long they're there. Thanks, Sam. Um, other hands from commissioners or proxies or, or any members of the public at this point? Uh, Richie White from New Hampshire, please go ahead. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't get uh, unmuted. Uh, thank you, Sam, for uh, being here today. Um, so when I look at uh, improvements in science, monitoring, and cooperative research, the first thing that comes to mind is money. And I wonder if you foresee any funds uh, coming available with part of this initiative. Thank you. Well, yeah, Congress ultimately appropriates federal funds. I mean, the states could, the states have their own appropriations process for funds, but I'm presuming you're asking about whether federal funding would be available, and that is up to Congress. Uh, the president has indicated that this is important and has talked about climate investments, and I do not believe the president has put out uh, his first budget yet. And I can't say what is in the budget. I do not know. It wouldn't surprise me if there are investments in climate in such a budget that would certainly be consistent with some of the statements that he has made in other fora. Um, but we can't we can't know that until we see that. Um, how whether or not that reaches down into fisheries issues or not, I cannot say. I do know that at least within the fisheries budget that we have today, we spend a significant portion of our budget on science and on climate science. So we are already making investments, and I know a number of states are too, in trying to get uh, understand the effects of climate change on fisheries. I expect that to continue. I expect that uh, to some extent we do have discretion within the, the, the budget to, to meet uh, emerging needs and uh, we do take input on that. And so um, to the extent that we need to look for new investments in science, I think that we may be able to do something like that. Uh, if there is if there is a need, if there is a defined action, certainly uh, on the Atlantic seaboard, we partner closely with many of the states. And so we try to engage in a joint science enterprise that is um, viewed as important for both uh, the states and the federal government. So I think that if there is a need to make a stronger investment in climate science, there is some belief that we may be able to do that. Although I can't speak about specific budget numbers because those are not out yet. And ultimately, even if the president does request it, it does not necessarily mean that council will fund it. 
the Congress will fund it. So, you know, the federal budget process is lengthy, uh, but I do think there is interest in, in using whatever resources we have available to address these questions. Yeah, thank you. Great. Any other hands? I'm not seeing any on the list right now. Not seeing any. Um, got one from the public. Uh, Jeff Kalin, go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Hi, Sam. Jeff Kalin with LUNS. I, I just, you know, listening a lot on this topic, but I just wanted to uh, thank you for your remarks um, about uh, your, perhaps uh, the agency's message to Interior on the 30 by 30 with the idea that we would inventory you know the protections that are already in place i'm very very glad to hear you say that and uh on the climate issue you know also that it's just not the fish it's the fishermen and and the and the uh, communities too that that we're going to have to um consider in in making any change uh, regulatory changes relative to climate shifts so uh, i just wanted to thank you for what i heard you say today that's pretty much it so thank you Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, another member of the public, Julie Evans. Julie, I think you're uh, still muted. We can't hear you. Is that better? Got gotcha you now. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Yep. Sorry about that. Um, I'm still new on these uh, Zoom meetings. I represent the town of East Hampton and its fishermen who um, are the first, I believe, that are going through the process that many will go through, um, especially in the New York bike going forward in the years, where um, offshore wind survey boats um, are um, stealing their gear, their set gear. Um, and um, it would be helpful if um, the people um, in charge of um, climate and uh, the wind turbine industry would take um, this to heart that fishermen and um, um, their communities are dependent upon these jobs as well as other people. And um, we would like to see um, uh, more attention paid um, in the um, growing offshore wind um, industry because right now it's very hard to get a claim paid. Um, I've been the representative, I am no longer the representative to the offshore wind. Um, uh, and I believe that's because I pressed very hard for fishermen who had lost gear to be reimbursed, not only for the gear, but also for their time, for their, um, um, the fuel spent, their bait. There's a lot that goes into it. And um, if you're not familiar with different fisheries, you might not um, take that into account. So maybe it's a matter of educating the people in charge of um, the survey boats and the wind industry, but um, please take it to heart that um, the salt of the earth, especially here in East Hampton, is under assault by um, not only the Orsted cable that's going to be landed in Wayne Scott, but the 96 mile cable coming through Long Island Sound. Thank you. Thank you for those Thanks. comments. Other... Sam, were you saying something? I was just thanking the commenter for her comments. Oh, excellent. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, other comments from commissioners, proxies, or public, or anyone? Eric Reed, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Beal. Thank you, Mr. Rock. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking at the last three bullet points, improved science monitoring and cooperative research. And you know, there's going to be a need to, um, to really work on fisheries dependent data for a lot of reasons. Uh, we have a study fleet now which collects data. And that those type of platforms are going to be critical going forward, especially because of the range that they that they cover on any given day, uh, and the ability of of 
those platforms to collect data once the Bigelow is no longer able to collect data, especially when we start putting man-made structures in the water. So I, I would hope that the Science Center and, and Commerce and Interior see the value in improving the, the relationship between science and industry, uh, especially in things like uh, standardizing trawl gear through a variety of methods, maybe a restrictor cable. So any platform can tow gear that's capable of collecting scientific data uh, without having to do thousands of tows to uh, recalibrate from one vessel to another. I think that's going to be critical going forward, um, especially, you know, the fleet exists and the range that uh, industry can provide to the to collecting data in the future is going to be really pretty substantial. So I hope that that's, that's something that's a priority going ahead. And, you know, the other thing that concerns me is, is monitoring, especially of a unique uh, ecological feature we have in the Mid-Atlantic, all the way up to the Gulf of Maine, which is the cold pool. Uh, there is no telling what climate change will do to that very unique uh, ecological event that we have here. And that, that really plays into how fish move and how fish exist in current places. And, and once wind farms get in there, there may be some issues with that. So I, I think that's something that we need to get baseline data on now. And if the industry can help with that, I think that's a money well spent. So thank you, Mr. Rapp. Thank you. Great. Any other comments? Not seeing any other hands going up, Sam. So you may have gotten off relatively easily, but I think you know just one one comment from from where I'm sitting is you know this notion of of funding for survey work has come up in a number of times, um, and it, and it's you know talked about sort of the expansion of surveys, the improvement of surveys, and I think that is great and something we need to work on. But I think even maintaining the current surveys that we have is another funding area that that we're a little bit nervous about because there are a number of surveys that fall under the CMAP and the NEMAP umbrella that are projecting some budget shortfalls in the in the near future, and you know we're we don't want to lose any ground, and we don't want you know legs of those surveys to have to be canceled and those sorts of things. So you know I think that's part of this funding question as well. You know the the two science centers on the East Coast and the state scientists do an amazing job of sort of projecting the impacts of climate change and where the fish are moving and where they have moved and, and pre predicting where they're going next, which is tricky. But I think, you know, especially some of the products out of the Northeast Fisheries Science Center have done a really good job of characterizing the impacts of, of uh, climate change. But, you know, without the basic survey work that's going on now at the, under NEMAP and CMAP and the states and the federal government, if that, if that deteriorates, then, you know, their ability to continue to provide the models and, and uh, other things that are being um you know provider right now that gets diminished so i think you know expansion and improving surveys is important but maintaining the ones we have is also a, a key part of this um so while i was rambling on katie almeida raised her hand so uh katie thank you can you hear me yes okay um katie almeida from the town doc uh i wanted to just touch upon shifting stocks I would like to see, and I know many others, especially from the North, would like to see um, the flexibility and management to be able to figure out how we can take advantage of accessing these species that are expanding or moving into our waters. Um, and I know that would also like to see what changes can be made of how we can have a say in that management. Um, as someone from Rhode Island, we uh, make a living on mostly managed uh, Mid-Atlantic fishery species, and, and we don't have a say in how those fish are managed um, at the table. Um, you know, we can be on um, the APs, um, and we can have a liaison, but I think we should be able to be involved from the start to the end and have full representation. Um, and uh, I'll just speak for now for myself, and I'm sure the other northern states might, you know, have an opinion on that, on that as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I will reiterate what I said earlier that I, I do believe the 
the mandate asks for opinions on changes in management and conservation measures. And that would include any opinion you would have on changes of governance structures that might allow us to better manage these fisheries to make them more resilient. Uh, and so much of what you were talking about is a change in the governance structure about how either the councils or commissions uh, approach this, this, these issues. And I think that those uh, comments are the kind of comments that the president was asking for. Great, thanks. Any, any other hands uh, from anyone? Well, I'm not seeing other, any other hands pop up. Um, so Sam, I just wanna reiterate the thank you for the time and the presentation. And um, you know, as, as Chairman Kelleher said, we'll um, continue to work with our commissioners and, and maybe providing some written comments down the road uh, depending on on how they want to handle that, but um, you know, as this process evolves, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us for additional input or feedback anytime. We're happy to happy to help out any way we can. Obviously, this is a unbelievably important issue, and it's something that, as you mentioned in your opening comments, you know, the something the commission's been wrestling with for a while, and we're going to continue to do so. So. Um, we appreciate the time and and uh, that you've put in, and and all the effort that you're going to you know, in working with the administration to move the ball forward on, on reacting to climate change and resiliency in the, in the fisheries that we all manage. So, um, you know, thank you for that. We really appreciate it. And um, I don't, don't see any other hands popping up right now. So I think, uh, I think that's probably all we have for this session.